Welcome to the One More Now broadcast. I'm your host, Darren Goodman. And for the next five to 10 minutes, we're going to talk about the dominion man was given and delegated by God. And it's from this understanding that we as Christians can also stand strong against all the outbreaks of the enemy, against all manner of sickness and disease. And in this understanding, we come to realize that we're seated in heavenly places far above it in Christ Jesus. And with that being said, let's jump right on in. Something that I need you to do is send me an email at info at ownchurch.org. Get your prayer request in right now. We're praying daily over the needs of, of the people that have responded. We're also seeing people healed and set free from this coronavirus. So get your prayer requests in, and I know God will work a miracle for you. Next, subscribe to us on Own Church channel at YouTube, as well as you can look me up in the search as Pastor Darren Goodman. You'll find our channel in YouTube. And subscribe. Uh, we want to be connected with you any way possible. And then on Facebook, please send, like, share. Uh, all of that helps us, as you know. And right now, people are needing to find our program. And so the send, the share, and the likes help us in that. You can look me up at Darren Goodman on Facebook or Own Church. And then last, don't forget, Sunday live, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we broadcast all over the world uh, with live streaming. So be a part of our live streaming service Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Well, turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Here we see the beginning time uh, where God's creating all. Uh, the universe creating all uh, types of plants and vegetation, animals. He's filling the earth and the contents, and then he makes man and woman. And here we see his opinion regarding mankind. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 26, Then God said, Let us make mankind or humanity in our own image, according to our likeness. I want you to underline that. And let them have dominion, underline that, over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals on the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So you see here that we were delegated or assigned by God to dominate or to have dominion in the chain, if you will, of command of creation. Now that also means macro level or micro organisms. So I believe that a virus is a micro organism and you have dominion over it in Christ because God said so. God delegated that authority. Let's look at this word dominion. Some Christians are afraid to talk about dominion. Some Christians are also afraid to exhibit authority or strength. And I want you to understand that God needs you to be strong God needs us as his people to exhibit strength in the earth. Dominion comes from a Hebrew word, radach. And that means to rule over, to dominate, to tread down, to crumble off, to scrape off. And I like this, to prevail against. So it's time for you to exhibit dominion that God has given you. Now, we also understand that that's not in our own human strength, even though in the chain of command by the human nature, we are far above all of other creation. But we also have an added strength that comes by being in Jesus Christ, seated in heavenly places far above all demonic forces, all darkness, all wickedness. This is what the New Testament says about you as a Christian. Hopefully, you can find strength in these verses. My desire for you is to no longer live as a Christian that's just weak and frail, but to become a Christian that's strong, that understands the word and understands their assignment that was given to them by God. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. It says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall crush your head and you will bruise his heel. Now, this is a very powerful 
scripture. This is a pivotal scripture because here what we see is God having a conversation to where he's stating the outcome of uh, Lucifer or Satan at this time, how he had deceived Eve. And because of that, his punishment was that there would be an enmity. There would be a war between the offspring of Eve, which we all are, and the offspring of the offspring of Satan, which is demonic forces. But we also see this beautiful part right here. He says, and he, speaking of Jesus Christ, I believe, and us that are in Christ, would crush his head, meaning the serpent's head. That means we would take dominion over him and we would destroy him. Jesus would destroy him at such a point that he would crush his headquarters. What is that? The place where strategy comes from. Do you hear that? It's the place where management comes from. Think of it like this. If you're going to destroy an army, where do you start? The headquarters. Because if you can take out the headquarters, you'll take out every regiment underneath. And here we see that God is foretelling that there will be one coming, which was Jesus, the word. And he would crush his head. And sure enough, his heel would be bruised because of it. Next, look at this. Romans 16, 20. Let's pull now the Old Testament into the New Testament. We are New Testament believers. So for us to establish a biblical truth, we must see it in the Old Testament where it reveals God's character, God's attributes, God's precepts carried through and threaded into the New Testament by which we have a greater covenant through Jesus Christ. However, God doesn't change. His precepts still remain. His way of operation still remains. And his promises still remain for us as New Testament Christians. Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. Do you see that? I just showed it to you in Genesis. Now here's a repeat in Romans. Now there is a precept when you're studying scripture and it's the law of repeat. It's the law of secession. And what it means is that if it's repeated or stated in the Old Testament and throughout the Old Testament, then it's restated again in the New Testament, then it's an established truth, a precept, a principle. And here we see this connector in Romans 16, verse 20, that God himself says, the God of peace will shortly crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And here we see that we don't operate on our own strength, but we're operating on the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave you grace, and that grace we access by faith, which is supernatural strength delegated to us to remain in God's covenant and to stand strong on the truth. This is grace. Too many Christians misinterpret grace and mercy. Grace is not God's forgiving power. That's mercy. Grace is God's enabling power to stand in your covenant. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom or what shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. In whom or what shall I be afraid? Now, in my Bible, I put right where it says whom, I say what. Because the Bible is clear our battle is not amongst flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places. So when I put a what in my Bible, I write right in my Bible. If you see my Bible, it's all written up and with notes. And what shall I be afraid of? Am I, if I'm in Christ, I need not fear anything. I do not need to be afraid. The Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that is in this world. Therefore, we do not fear. I also like the part of this passage in the first part where it says, my light. That word, my light, means revelation and understanding. So when a believer has revelation and understanding, their path is lit. Where they step is well lit. They know the path that they're to walk down because there's revelation there. There's understanding. There's enlightenment. Does that make sense? 
Go with me to Psalms 91.10. Look at what this passage says. It says, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague, right there, coronavirus, come near your dwelling place. The Bible's clear that as a believer, you can have what you say. We need to be careful in what we are saying. Jesus said, ask anything of the Father in my name, and he will do it. I believe Jesus above any person, above any Bible scholar, above any preacher, I believe Jesus at his very word. It is life to me. Look at verse 11, Psalms 91, verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Some people want to see an angel. I don't care to see them. Great if I do. Great if I don't. Because I know their assignment. They're ministering spirits by God assigned to his people in the earth to help us accomplish the will of God. That's it. My salvation is not in an angel. My salvation is not in a, an idol. My salvation is in Jesus Christ alone. And he is the person that went to the cross, that died a horrible death, and that was raised up by the hand of God. That is my Savior. Not his mother, no one else. Jesus Christ alone is the Savior of mankind. Scripture says that, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe on him should not perish but be saved. That settles it, friend, right there. So who are you believing in for your salvation? Should be Jesus Christ. Now, we uh, think Mary was very blessed. The Bible says she's blessed above all women. But my healing was paid for at the cross through Jesus Christ. No one else. The Bible's clear on that. So when I pray, I pray for the healing atonement that came from Jesus' blood and his body. Does that make sense? Now, look at this. What I need you to do now is go and send me a prayer request. Email me at info at ownchurch.org. I want to pray for you. Because I believe that as we take dominion through the word of God, seated in Christ in heavenly places, we can conquer this virus. I believe together, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he is among them. And as we touch this thing, as we lay our hands on these requests, I believe healing is going to be released to you. I believe that. I've seen it happen before too many times. And why not you? And why not now? Last, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Own Church. Look me up, Pastor Darren Goodman. Look at all of our videos we posted. Send, share, and like on Facebook. And remember this, one word from God can change your life. I'll see you the same time tomorrow. Be blessed.